Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to John and Ken about arrivals, Ohio State and Michigan. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for your time. It's great to be there. I can't even imagine the first kind of conversations because you look at this rivalry and you look at college sports and you look at so many things that have happened. And I don't know who wants to tackle this first. I want you both to answer it. But what are those first conversations of like, what are we going to put in this documentary? Like, there's so many things to choose from. (laughs) Author, author. John, why don't you take it away? Yeah, it's a a great question. This is a classic, uh, you know, 10 pounds of material in a five pound bag. Um, (laughs) This, uh, I mean, this was really done sort of to explore this idea of rivalry, which, which Ken and I have talked about. That's kind of the the secret hidden in plain sight, right? We yeah. we love rivalry. We all we we get up for the right games. The athletes do too, but I don't think fans and even athletes realize how significant these games are. Mm-hmm. That these games bring out their best performances. Their body chemistry is different. Athletes' saliva levels and testosterone they're different for rivalry games. So we thought sort of where. What's a classic rivalry? And uh, we figured we, we couldn't start anywhere uh, other than Ohio State and Michigan. We, we did this before. You know, I'll, I'll let you know. Uh, this is, the timing has worked out. We did, we did this uh, more than a year ago. We did not know that in November 2022, we were talking about uh, two undefeated teams with national title implications say, on I'm their like, game. I, I was about to say optics are like that was definitely planned. PD, we had our crystal ball. Like you can, you can't even picture us trying to talk our way onto the field a year ago when this was just a concept, and we knew we had to be ahead. John's going, you know, we got to get it now, and how epic that year became. And you know, when you make these choices, because we're trying to sort of set the die for something mm-hmm. that'll hopefully continue with unlimited choice, you would have imagined that somewhere along the way you would have gone, God, what if we had done this? That never happened. Like yeah. this got better and better. The more we peeled back the onion, the woody bow, I think like you've never seen him before. And just so much great history to prove the thesis that rivalry is the uh, produces the best in human performance. One of my favorite things about the documentary, one of my favorite things about college sports, sports in general, I love the energy. And I think this documentary really did this. That really showed the passion of the fans, the passion of the players. Like it's on, you know what I mean? And like, it's like the flip is switched and everything. How important was that, Ken, to make sure that the passion was in this documentary like the whole time in terms of the people you've interviewed and the things that you chose? Because that's something I took away from the documentary, to be honest with you. Well, that, that first of all, I... I'm so excited to hear that from you, <laughs> of all people, because that's really it. That's yeah. what it's all about. How important it's everything. It's yeah. the only thing, you know, to go uh, almost to quote Vince Lombardi or to mangle him. But, you know, that's what this is trying to get under the fingernails of what is it that makes this so incredibly important to all of us, to you, to John, to me, to everyone who we're involved with, to people who you know, have nothing to do with it from a professional perspective, but it's everything in their lives and the generations. And we've been talking about this for a long time and, and, and it, it, it could have been twice as long and that energy level, I think would have sustained. Absolutely. John, this is like a yes or no question, but this is almost like a yes or no. And, but to elaborate, to clarify (laughs) questions. So it's a big one. Do we love As a spectator sport, do we love college sports, specifically college football, because we are seeing the start of potential greatness and we are seeing the start of people's careers and big games that define people's careers down the road? Like they could be playing, being a pro NFL player for 20 years and we go back to that one big game, that big bowl that defined them. Is that why we love college sports as a spectator? I'd say yes and no. I mean, I think there's an element of that, right? This is like finding the the band before they go and start playing arena shows. And I remember that kid when he was 19. But I I think a lot of times we love college sports because it's regional. We love it because rooting for a team says something about who we are. If every single player on Alabama and Auburn never made it to the NFL, 
there would still be so much passion there because fans have sort of picked their tribe. And if you root for Auburn, it says very different, you know, something very different than if you root for Alabama. And I think that a lot, a lot what we discovered in this documentary, there are these passionate fans who have never, they didn't attend the schools. Yep. A lot of times they've never even been on campus. They haven't been to a game. But when you say, I am a Michigan fan, that is saying something about who you are. And when you say, I'm an Ohio State fan, you're saying something very different. Absolutely. No, that's a very good point. Ken, you know, and I'd like you to kind of elaborate on this because for a lot of people that haven't seen it, there's some really cool thing. Um, one of my cool, the coolest things about this is J.K. Simmons narrates this, and this is really cool. Now, there is there is a really cool, I don't know if it's the reason why he was chosen, but there's a really cool backstory that I'd like you to share with my viewers, if that's okay. <laughs> Totally. Well, you know, in the world of we, we wanted to be both lucky and good, you know, we were trying to say, let's dream big. Right. And this all starts just, you know, in a room thinking yeah. about what would be perfect. And JK seemed perfect. We knew of his relationship, but the deeper we got and we realized that he is sort of ground zero of the very <laughs> thesis of this thing. You know, your last question was what, you know, why is it so matter so much? It's, it's such a formative moment of identification that never leaves our DNA. Right. And for him to have been born in Michigan and then we watched the, you know, it, it almost, it was almost too obvious, right, that he was born in Michigan, that his father was a music teacher at Ohio State. By the way, whiplash, you know. I mean, who knows if that Oscar-winning performance would have even happened if it weren't for this. And then you've got, obviously, Rich Eisen on the other side of the spectrum and the ongoing rivalry between those two. And it just... It literally, he would have been perfect casting regardless because he had the tone that we wanted, which was not just straight up drama and, and seriousness, but obviously there's a wink and there's sarcasm, and but there's real passion there. So that was just magic to be able to have somebody like JK and then to be able to get him because he's a pretty busy dude. Oh, absolutely. John, I do have a specific kind of writing question for you, if that's okay, specifically, that you could definitely tie into the documentary. There's a big difference in terms of what will make, like, in terms of an article or an editorial or something, in terms of for you specifically as the writer, what you think will pop and what you think will resonate with readers compared to what I will think or someone else. For you specifically, when you're writing something, what are those things you're looking at that you think are like, wow, this is good? I really can relate to this. And I think a lot of people, what, what makes it pop for you off the page specifically? Yeah, it, it's a good question because it's, it's different. The page versus film versus a visual media. Like our director, Peter Carl did such a great job of saying sort of, this is a great line. If you were writing a sports illustrated story, I'm not quite sure it's great for a documentary. There's some of that goes the other direction. I mean, I think, look, then the Ohio state and Michigan have an intense rivalry, not a newsflash. So, <laughs> <laughs> we needed to figure out sound bites that people haven't heard before, angles to this rivalry. If you just sort of did the Wikipedia page, I'm not sure that makes for a particularly entertaining story, whether it's print or whether it's it's visual. So I think things that people haven't heard before, ways of looking at this that people haven't heard before. I mean, so, some of these sound bites, you sort of you, you hear them come off the subject's lips and you say, there's no way that's not going in. But I think your question is a good one because a lot of times something that's great in a print story doesn't necessarily translate it and vice versa. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's that's true. I'm still these journalists. I'm still, you know, you probably have colleagues that just the these sound bites never go away, right? Like some of their right. sound bites. That they, yeah. <laughs> the spot. <laughs> the spot. Absolutely, yeah. gentlemen. It was an honor. You know, can I just say, Pete? Yeah, absolutely. The, the other thing is that we. The one thing we wanted to do is it's a great story. It's yeah. a great story on the page. It's epic. It's it's American. It's universal. But what we wanted to be sure we did is tell it, tell it in a way that it's never been told. Not just this story, but <laughs> really any sports story. Like, how do you get under the fingernails of why politics, religion, our work, it all gets tied up in a football game, right? And that our lives and and economics and and you know people worse. calling in sick to attend the game or so watching it online it's, <laughs> it's bigger than we are and we wanted to make sure that you if you were tuning into this thing at any stage of the two hours that you'd go this is 
different. I've not seen anything quite like it because there's a lot of great work being done on sports out there. This goes to sports and beyond. Really. And wrong and, sport. I mean, so. you hit it out of the park. Wrong sport. I guess we'll say you hit, you hit the end zone. But uh, we have we'll to wrap get up. there too. Don't yeah, worry. Gentlemen, it was an honor and privilege to speak with you. Very quickly, could someone plug away where – because this thing is going to be available for a lot of people to watch in certain areas. It's going to be on Big Ten Networks. Can someone plug super quickly? We'll start with, and then, John, you can jump in, that if you go to RivalsDocuseries.com, it has a locator that both has the trailer, has videos, but it'll also tell you exactly in your area where to watch. There'll be multiple airings. It'll be on some of the Valley, all of the Valley Regional Sports Networks and on Marquee, and yes, it'll be on Tennis Channel because we sort of were the progenitor of it with (laughs) Nadal and Federer in a different form. It'll be on the Big Ten Network. Uh, on the Friday before thank before the game, sorry, mm-hmm. and so and it'll it's going to keep playing. So you know, check local listings <laughs> is yeah. and it's going to be multiple plays, and hopefully uh, it's going to be a perennial that people will be able to enjoy for years to come. Absolutely, gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. It was so great chatting with you. Baby, thanks. Likewise. We'll see you soon. No problem. It's been Pop Turn at YouTube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. Look out for Rivals. Until next time, this is John, Ken, and Petey Beats signing off. PD Beats here from Pop Turn. It's me to John Bacon about Rivals, Ohio State versus Michigan. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, PD Beats. You know, I feel like we love college sports because of the fact that it's kind of where everything starts. We obviously, there's a lot of kind of standouts in college doesn't end up being kind of a big pro career, but we remember them forever because of the big games and everything. What is your favorite thing specifically about covering kind of co- college sports specifically? Uh, I think it's unique. Uh, first of all, it's unique to America. I know that. When I was covering the Olympics in 98 in Nagano, I was trying to explain to people over there who know a fair amount about U.S. sports, yeah. uh, <laughs> sports writers. And Michigan, Michigan had just won the nine, 1997 national title. Yeah. So, oh, so you beat the Packers. It's like, no, it's not how it works. It's not how it works. It's hard to explain. Um, so it's unique to us. I also think, too, possibly outside of international soccer, I think football fans, college football fans, are the most passionate people on the planet mm-hmm. as far as sports fans go. And that comes with some, some downsides, of course, here and there. But they just witnessed Twitter, obviously. But uh, the passion for it, and it's irrational. It's where they've got us, naturally. Mm-hmm. And... When you move away from your hometown, your college town or wherever, uh, your loyalty towards your college usually grows deeper. Whereas if you move away from your city, uh, the loyalty to the NFL team usually wanes. So yeah. the sheer passion, the connection, the sense of identity that we feel for college football. I love that. What? There's been so many kind of rivals. People kind of like the trailer for this kind of talks about, you know, it's the game, you know, Ohio State versus Michigan and everything. But like. What, in your opinion, makes this rivalry stand out compared to a lot of other rivalries? Because in college football, there's a lot of other rivalries as well and everything. But specifically this one, what stands out and, in your opinion, like gets its own documentary because of it? Uh, well, first of all, they did a great job. I mean, all so I am is a, is a talking head on this thing. Yeah, <laughs> uh, so You don't know what they're going to do with what you did and how it's going to look. So I was as pleasantly surprised. It wasn't my surprise, I guess, but... Very pleased with what I saw last week as anybody. Yep. Um, I've never seen a more intellectual approach to it. That was pretty cool. Um, see it all broken down. But they broke down the reasons. It's geography, of course. It's the intensity of it. It's the competitiveness. All these things. Um, I think for me, it, what it is is that, look, other sports have got trophies. Other sports have got you know playoffs and so on. This is a one-game playoff with no trophy. The trophy is you either one year lost. And that is enough by itself. And as I said in the thing, if you don't think it matters, ask the guy who lost it. Um, there are no redos. There's no divisional playoffs. There's no any of this stuff. There's no second chance. You got 365 days to either gloat or to commiserate with your buddies. Um, and that, I think, is special also. I didn't realize, having grown up here, what a big deal it was nationwide until I moved away for a while. And I realized, no, the whole nation watches this thing. That was a Super Bowl-level answer, John. <laughs> that was Thank really- you. Hopefully not as long. <laughs> no, it's so true. It's like the one game, nothing like officially is on the line, but everything's right. on the line if you think about it. 
Exactly. Exactly. There's, there's no trophy. You get a Big Ten title. So the adding to what you said, the documentary really caught the the reason why we love sports. Also, in my opinion, is we love the energy. And obviously, during the pandemic, you know, all these sports that played without any with empty stadiums and everything, like you really felt the difference of crowds and everything, the energy and the passion and everything. I think the documentary did a really good job. Um kind of touching on the passion and energy of the rivalry as well. Do you know what I mean by that? Absolutely. Um, look, I mean, we are irrational animals, and they they got to it. What I loved about it also, given the academic setting for a lot of the scenes with J.K. and Rich Eisen and so on, um, these are otherwise intellectual people at a very intellectual place, be it Ohio State or University of Michigan, mm -hmm. acting utterly <laughs> irrationally. Uh, there's no there's no you know breaking this down as far as that goes. And they did a great job explaining how that all works. But the, the passion of it is what drives people. I know a friend of mine is a, a neurologist here at the University of Michigan, highly acclaimed. Yep. Michigan loses on Saturday. He's got a crappy day on Monday. It's like, you better not have too crappy a day. you got patients coming in. <laughs> but uh, otherwise, people who should otherwise be above the fray, we all get sucked in. Wolverines, like, it's just, I'm a big hockey guy too. You know, it's just, it's, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it's it's. Here's my, here's my previous book. So there you go. <laughs> show out. Just a little little show out. <laughs> Look, I, I, I grew up playing hockey. I've coached. I've covered it. But college football to me is just all consuming. Listen, there is something also about kind of those rivalries, and and I just it feels like. You know, knowing some players, I cover a lot of hockey as well, as uh, as well, and I do a lot of interviews as well. Um, and I actually had some bylines in Sports Illustrated in the NHL section a couple years ago. But, like, it's you work. talk about these college games forever. Like, you'll be kind of like, you know what I mean by that? Like, they, they, they live on forever, these specific games, even when a title's not on the line. You know what I mean by that? <laughs> I do completely. And what you think would happen normally is that over time, you know, time heals all wounds. No, it doesn't. Uh, the, the 73, 10, 10 tie, Michigan, Ohio state, that gets worse over time. Not better. 2016, of course, the, the spot, which they got into in great detail, Ohio state, the Cooper years and so on mm -hmm. that on both sides, the, the intensity of it only grows over time does not diminish. I don't know too many things that you can say that about hundred percent. I want to get a little deep and kind of want, I want to pick your brain about this John, because you can answer this with regardless to the rivalry, regardless to like just in general, but even like hockey, the like college sports, do we sometimes forget that these are like student athletes and that it's a couple of things. One, because I feel like that kind of gets lost in translation a little bit because there's the balancing of the academics and the like on on like the performance, the sport, right? So that alone is a lot, right? They got to be able to have time management and everything. But they're young and they're like getting used to everything, and they might make mistakes and everything. Do we understand that as a society about college sports? We absolutely do not understand that. I don't. I agree. <laughs> That's not even close. No. Um, on several levels, one, when you're paying this kind of money, you pay nowadays for tickets. When you're filling stadiums, hundred thousand at the horseshoe or the big house. Um, when you know your whole fall schedule, don't host a wedding on a football game and certainly not a home one. That's a rookie move that people rarely make uh, in the Midwest, but you know, probably the Southeast also. Um, but with all that irrationality, of course, people forget they are students. Uh, generally, they're pretty serious students. That's not always the case, of course. Yep. But uh, but also, what I found is the first week of school when I when I've been inside programs. Mm -hmm. um, the first week of school, the players come in tired to practice. And one of the coaches said, people forget this. They're students. That first week of school, they're more tired than they were the week before. Yeah. So they take it seriously. And one reason why the Michigan-Ohio State rivalry is great on top of all the others is the timing is perfect. It's usually, it used to be the Saturday before Thanksgiving. Now it's Thanksgiving Saturday. Yep. Um, but, uh, but it's before the finals, before the bowl games, before all this other stuff. It's your last real go-round. And uh, that's where all the chips are. And you know, and, and it's consistent. Mm -hmm. It happens this way every single time. Absolutely. You, know, you don't know when the, when the Packers are going to play the Bears or the Jets and the Patriots, of course. This game, you know damn well it's the last game of the season, period. And it's like on the calendar for many people. And uh, they might be calling in sick like three months in advance, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's worse than deer hunting season around here, right? <laughs> John, thank you so much for coming on Pop Turner. It was so great chatting with you.
Hey, you're great. A lot of fun. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, all the all the description, all the um links. There, the people are going to be able to watch this documentary in a lot of capacities. There's a website. It's going to be the Big Ten Network. There's a lot of kind of opportunities. So they really have to check that out. But thank you so much for your time. It was so great chatting with you. Well, everywhere I believe from November twentieth on. So absolutely, check it out. absolutely. So. Well, this has been Pop Turn of youtubecom slash Pop Turn of previous episodes. Till next time, this is John Bacon and Pity Beats signing off. Pity Beats here from Pop Turn. It is speaking to Peter Carl about rivals Michigan and Ohio State. Welcome to the show, man. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me on. I mean, you know, we talked about before. I mean, we have we have a good name. Like it's we're we, it's, it's I know you have a very good name. I, and, We're a dying breed, man. I don't, I don't, when's the last time you met a baby named Peter? I, I, that is a very Usually. good question. Absolutely. Like I, I like. It's interesting. Do you go? Do you have some people that go like Pete? Some people that go Pete. Like, do you ever get Pete? Yeah, like I have because yeah. I have like the 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 name PD Beats, right? So I get Peter. I get PD. I get oh, Pete. Nice. Right. Yeah, so I yeah, get, yeah. I get all of I them. I feel bad. I don't. I don't have a good name. Like if people are like you go by Peter or Pete. I'm like I don't really care. Yeah, I don't, don't care. Either. Either. <laughs> don't want Pete. That's for you. No, absolutely. All right, so this documentary is amazing. I can't even imagine what the mindset is in terms of kind of hopping on this as a director and everything. What is the first thing that kind of comes to mind in terms of capturing the energy, the passion of college sports? Because that was one of my favorite things about the documentary specifically. Got you. Yeah, nice. Um, well, I mean, I think the, the 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 task was really like, how do we tell the story about this documentary uh, sorry, sorry about this rivalry differently yeah. and using this lens of science and emerging research around rivalry. And that was just like this crazy task and that kind of hadn't, hasn't really been done that before. Um, but college football provides a really, really great um, breeding like a, a example or case study for the passion of sports, right? Because there is such a huge fandom around, especially teams like Ohio State and Michigan. So you kind of have all this... Um, tribalistic nature that we like to always connect with sports mm -hmm. that allowed for a really good case study to analyze a rivalry. A hundred percent. I mean, you know, the director does a lot of things specifically in terms of like the conversations. Cause I don't know what, I feel like it depends on the project, but in terms of kind of like figuring out what's going to be included. Cause I look at this and I feel like the task of like, like picking what's going to be in this documentary. I oh, feel dude. like that's like, a seven <laughs> seven like that's like seven like a seven season series right of like what are we oh, gonna man. put in that so what was that kind of like just talking about you know what's gonna be in the documentary what could be yeah. in the documentary just curious about that a little yeah so i mean the big thing was was i wanted to lead with the science because yeah. there have been documentaries about this rivalry in the past yeah people know what's happened since 1897 yep. till 2020 right so we i spoke to a lot of professors and people who are kind of leading in this field mm -hmm. um and they pointed me in the direction you know they kind of i kind of had a lot of conversation with them and figured out okay you guys one you speak well need that for on camera and two these two guys joe cobbs and david tyler they're research partners they have this project called the no rivalry project mm -hmm. and they have been able to distill rivalry down to 10 common ingredients they, they basically say like every rivalry has these ingredients yep. and just a different mixture of them, like a recipe. So I was like, okay, that simplifies a complex thing, which is what we need for this. Yeah. So we're going to take these ingredients and this is the ultimate rivalry. And we're going to analyze each of the ingredients with examples from the history of the rivalry. So that was like provided our framework. And then it was able for like, all right. And then we had a board of index cards and this goes with this. And then how do we connect that to that? So they helped a lot providing the structure, but um, yeah, it was the hardest storytelling task I think I've ever had. To do, I, I sure. feel like the coolest thing about documentaries and I feel like it's the coolest thing and I feel like it's full circle with directors for documentaries because I feel like as a society that like, we crave like how things are made. You know what I mean? Like when we watch mm -hmm. like, like action movies, like we love that. And it literally is like movies about things that were like made and happened if you think about it <laughs> isn't it kind of yeah. full circle it's trippy a little right yeah you, you're not wrong yeah i mean that that is you know i think we're like there's so much stuff now yeah. there's we try to consume so much and there's so much entertainment but then you know there's a huge world of like getting beneath the surface and trying to understand why 
yeah. why do we like this more than that right and why do you, this the question here was why do rivals bring out a different level from us you know and there is a psychological a physical a mental emotional reason for all of that and it's hardwired into us basically as as animals and and that's what that's what you know the doc definitely explores just using this this college football rivalry as support i feel like we love college sports for a lot of reasons but i think we love seeing and it doesn't all, all like it doesn't like it happen like this. It could be the other way around. It could be like a you, we've seen it right, like the 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 star studded guy in college, and then you know hangs up the cleats. Like it happens all the time. But I think right. we love the start of potential greatness. Mm. I think that's what we do. You know what I mean by that? Like it is the start yeah. of like the potential totally. big kind of groundbreaking career. 20 years down the road. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, is that, is that, and is that kind of a little bit of like a mindset, a little bit about the documentary we do too? For college sports, I think, yeah. I think, yeah, I mean, I think a lot plays into the mentality of a college athlete. Yeah. Like, one, you're not a professional yet, right? You're not getting paid to do this. You're trying to get there, right? And these schools, in particular, you know, they find the best kids in the country. So they're, you know, filtering up toward the highest level. Mm -hmm. And then these games, rivalry games, you know, they're where you're on the biggest stage. So you need to show up. You need to show out. But there's like legit science around what happens to you physically around a rivalry game. And like they, they in the doc, we quote a study that um, in 2006, they tested Italian soccer players before, like they tested their testosterone levels before games for yeah. a whole season. And they found that their testosterone levels were higher before two games. Home games, because you, which is, related to defending your home which is innate in us and even higher when you were playing a rivalry you're playing a rival and and so when you have that hell of, uh, higher elevated levels of testosterone your heart's beating faster you're capable of more physically right and your mindset also changes it goes from looking it goes from looking at something small and very in front of you to a larger abstract mindset it's called the promotion focus you're looking at yourself at like okay I'm going to make a legacy in this game. So you match those two things together, your physical enhancement and plus your mental state. That's why you get epic stuff happen in rivalry games. Is the mindset different working on like a docu-series compared to a documentary or is it all storytelling for Peter Carl? <laughs> Good question. Um, That's why I'm here. <laughs> this, <laughs> so this, was, this was the first of what could be a series yeah. um and so we're i mean kind of trying to blaze a trail here with what this could be um and it's so good and i, and I think, can't wait for people to see it absolutely yeah thanks man I, I think that we tried to approach it like okay how can this be replicated down the road will will they will a future episode of this break down every single element of rivalry i don't Think so i don't think it should i think you should look at all the different ones but so it was a mixture of that and also like how do we make this the most the best standalone version of this yep. and um it being the ultimate rivalry then we, we that ticked every box we wanted to cover every box so yeah it was a little bit of both no absolutely yeah. peter thank you so much for coming on pop turtle it was so great chatting with you man Appreciate it, man. Always good to chat. Yeah, with all the people. like it's gonna be available in a lot of different areas. There's a website they could check out as well with all yep. the links. Um, I believe it's, yep. it's Rivals Sports. Rivals State Michigan. Yeah, absolutely. Although the, the website is yeah. rivals.series.com. Absolutely. And then do you have social yep. media that people can keep up to date with at all? Or yeah, I'm on Instagram, Keter Parl, little <laughs> spoonerism. Um <laughs> so good. But you know, I'm not the most active person on social. I think just support the film and and then, uh, you know, let Valley Sports know that, that you liked it, and then they'll appreciate that. Absolutely. Well, this has been Pop Turner of YouTube.com slash Pop Turner for previous episodes. Until next time, it's Peter Carl and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turner Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turner on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turner on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.